Welcome to The Game Plan. My name is Gareth Soloway coming to you live from Verified Investing Studios. Lots to discuss as always. We're in the midst now of earnings season. Taiwan Semi just reported this morning. Yesterday we saw these semiconductor stocks gap up and crap out. I even gave you guys a heads up that could happen after the ASML news yesterday. We'll cover all that and more. Let's get right into the action here, guys. Let's go as we go here. So right over to the action, into the market blast. Let's go right into the screen here at Verified Investing. Click on market blast and bring that right up and scroll down to the key headlines of the day. Okay, so the couple key headlines that I kind of get in my attention at least, what we see first and foremost is jobless claims, right? So jobless claims coming out this morning at 212,000. That is, again, just nothing to worry about, at least when it comes to people filing for unemployment. It's very minimal. Now, that doesn't tell us the underlying issues. Are there a lot of people with part-time jobs that are not able to file for unemployment? Maybe multiple part-time jobs. But ultimately, this number continues to be historically very, very low and really not a sign of concern for the labor market at this time. Last week was 211,000, so basically the same, and we were expecting 215,000. So all of these numbers now for the last couple weeks or last month coming in right around this 215,000 level. Philly Fed Manufacturing Index comes in this morning at 15.5. The market had expected a 1.5 number, so that's much stronger than expected. Last month was 3.2. So again, Philly Fed Manufacturing, what this tells us is manufacturing is starting to uptick just a little bit. Another sign that the economy, at least core portions of the economy, are hanging in there while other portions are not. Very, very much a kind of bipolar market or economy right now, in my opinion. Couple things to watch in just a little while. In fact, just a few minutes. Uh, Federal Reserve member Bowman speaks at 9.05, so just a minute or two away here. In addition, FOMC member Williams speaks at 9.15 a.m. Taiwan Semiconductor reported solid earnings, revenue, and guidance, so they were actually pretty solid on these numbers. The issue here is, and the stock is trading lower, the stock rallied 35% since the beginning of the year. So the market was already saying, hey, listen, we know they're going to beat earnings estimates. These earnings estimates are already too low from analysts. They come in with earnings that beat these levels, but ultimately not high enough for investors. And we're seeing a little bit of a pullback today on Taiwan Semi. All right, will that drag the semis down? Well, right now we see NVIDIA higher, SMCI higher, AMD was flat to positive. Will we see another flush like yesterday? And we're going to talk about that flush because that was a pretty nasty reversal on the semis yesterday. Tesla gets a hold rating from buy rating. So they got downgraded here. Deutsche Bank downgrading them. The stock's falling about 2% pre-market. Now, again, I look at the technicals. We have positive diversions on the RSI. We're, in, we're near or into support in this 150 range. So, again, when you start to see downgrades, a lot of times that's the kind of the last flush before a bounce in the stock. So I'm actually continuing to look at this as a potential buying opportunity for a swing trade only. Make sure you understand that because once the economy goes south in the U.S. later this year, I think, again, Tesla's probably going a lot lower. But in the short term, I'm actually scoping this out as a swing trade. Lastly, D.R. Horton, higher on earnings after they beat earnings estimates. The company said tight housing supply is the key culprit here. So again, because there's so few houses out there for sale slash new houses, they're still able to maintain a high price, even in spite of high interest rates. And again, that seems to be the big issue. I only think this gets corrected if we see the economy start to slip. More and more people losing jobs will take people away from being able to buy houses. As people lose jobs, you will see people have to go, go into foreclosure, which will then increase the supply as well. So a lot of this, including what the Fed wants, which is lower inflation. It all hinges on the economy here in the U.S. All right. So going into that, we want to take a look at a couple charts. Before we do a couple charts, we're going to just do our quick spin to find out who wins. Remember, 10 ounces of silver up for grabs today to the lucky winner right here from Kitgo. Thank you, Kitgo, as always, for donating this to our Wheel of Appreciation. So here we go, going through all of the comments here, going through, 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 through. And again, amazing all the comments that we get on these videos. And I thank you guys for putting in that effort. Again, here we go. Cry, well, basically crypto, but it's C-R-Y dot P-T-O-B-J-L-W-41. 
So Crypto BJLW41, congratulations, 10 ounces of silver. It's funny, a crypto, obviously this person's into crypto, but they're getting some silver. And again, folks, just remember, diversify. It's one thing I learned early on in my trading career. When you don't diversify and you over leverage in one area, it's just a recipe for disaster. So if you love your crypto, make sure you have a little bit of silver and gold on hand too. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's get back into the charts here as we go into these charts, taking a look at the S&P 500 pre-market. Not a lot of action. Yesterday was a pretty nasty sell-off day. We did have a down day. Here's where the kind of the, the aftermarket began. This was this morning, so we were up a little bit, and we continue to be net positive on the S&P. Now, remember, we've seen this day in, day out, and I want to just mention this because this is a big deal to me. If we zoom in on these charts, we continue to see the futures being bid up overnight. And I talked about this yesterday, how these futures, it's almost like the institutions are trying to bid them up on very thin in volume. And again, the lighter the volume, the more small amounts of money can lift the S&P futures. And so you see it continually on this chart, this daily chart of the SPY, we opened up here, for instance, and we ended down here, right? Then we did have a bounce day. Then we opened up here, we flushed down here, we ended here. We opened up here, we flushed down, or and, and we still ended, well, I should say we here, we flushed down, we ended green. Here again, down, here we opened higher, sold off, here we opened higher, sold off. Especially over the last few days, we've been getting these gap hires, and then again, selling just comes in. And the selling is relentless, folks. I've said this before, but I haven't seen this type of selling since bear market periods, as the institutions seem to be trampling to get out of this market, but then trying to lure the buy the dippers back in. So just be very careful. You'll still get updates, right? The institutions can't continually crush the market because eventually they crush the will of the retail investor. But what they'll do is they'll sell for a few days and then they'll step back and let the bounce come in knowing that this will excite the bulls, this will get people back in the market. Okay, buy the dips working, here we go, we're going back to all-time highs, and then they'll come out and do it again, then they have to step back and let the hope return. And I just wanna to continue to mention that as a key to your understanding of how markets work. Zooming out on the daily chart, this is a big level I'm watching today in case we do sell off and go negative. Uh, right around 497, there's a key gap fill right here. This is also a point two. Three six, I think, Fibonacci level as well. So again, key level there. Again, from the October low, this would be that retrace. And again, it's right around 497. I'm watching this like a hawk. If it gets hit today, does that then trigger a bounce? Or do we flush right through it? In which case, the selling is going to get more intense before it subsides. All right, going to the NASDAQ. Oh, by the way, before we do that, I do want to just zoom out. In my opinion, this is the beginning, and you guys know this, right? Once we broke this wedge, if you've been following these game plans, I basically said, once we break this, we're going to get that down move. It's exactly what's happened, right? Even though you have supports along the way, these are what I would call minor supports. They give you small bounces. They don't give you major bounces. This level here should be our target zone for this year. All right, this is the previous all-time high on the S&P 500 or the Spiders. On the Spiders, it's right around the 460 level. On the S&P, it's around 4,600. So the key being, again, is that this will be a former major all-time high before we had that big corrective move. Back then, that will be, again, a key level. And again, just something to watch there as we go through here. And I apologize, that's actually not the previous all-time high. Uh, in fact, we are even coming into that a little sooner. That's a pivot point. So that would be a big pivot point, but it's not the former all-time high. All right, but either way, that's the level I'm watching for. That would be about a corrective move of approximately, I believe, 12% down on the S&P 500. So look for, again, a run of your mill, 10 to 12% correction on the S&P 500. This is something that has multiple factors telling me that this is the ultimate downside target for this year. And again, it would be about 4,600 on the S&P. Yesterday, we got very close to 5,000. So 400 more points, yes, that's almost 10%, but it doesn't seem like such a big move in the scheme of what we've seen to the upside. I mean, just look since, since really the, the start of November, look at that move up. All we're talking about is retracing, which by the way, this is about a 618 Fibonacci retrace if we get into that zone. All right, a couple other things to go over here on the charts as we flip over to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has had two major breakdowns now. Okay, so again, what was the first one? The first one was this 
chan this wedge pattern, right? And that kind of mirrored the S&P 500. We broke, we confirmed, and then we started to chop sideways. I showed you yesterday how, again, that sideways chop is basically distribution. Distribution is when the institutions are selling, the retail is FOMOing in, they meet, they equal each other out, and that's why you get the sideways action. It's equal amounts of buyers to sellers. Then what we saw here is that channel has now broken and confirmed as of yesterday. What that means is this level here is going to be big resistance on the way up. That again is going to be big resistance. It also likely signals further downside on the NASDAQ 100. Interestingly enough, we're coming into earnings season for tech. Today after the bell, Netflix reports earnings. That's the first big technology name. You could say Taiwan Semi maybe a little bit as well this morning, but Netflix is really in the US. That's the household name. More people will recognize the name Netflix than Taiwan Semiconductor unless you're a trader or an investor. Okay, going to a couple other things, the 10 year yield. Getting a small bounce today, but remember, we have our easy channel to kind of differentiate. We have resistance here. We pulled back yesterday, and again, we're getting a small bounce. We'll see where things go. Markets generally don't want yields to go up, but at the same time, we did sell off yesterday when yields were going down, so it's just kind of a hodgepodge at this point. Either way, I would still anticipate yields eventually pulling back. So I think we've actually put in a top on the 10-year yield in the near term here with max bullishness, max hawkishness from the Fed. And I think ultimately we're probably headed back to this zone right here. Two trend lines converging right about 4.35%. All right, on we go to the next chart here. Um, I do just want to mention what we saw yesterday. We saw NVIDIA opening higher, but look at the breakdown. NVIDIA had already broken down here on the chart. And if we zoom in just a little bit, you can see it even more clearly, right? So on NVIDIA, we were kind of tracking this area here, right? Multiple hits of this trend line. We broke, we confirmed, retraced to the scene of the crime, and then down we go. I still think NVIDIA is going lower, folks. Again, could be wrong, but this is what we're seeing in the charts. The probability-wise is telling us lower for NVIDIA. I do have this trend line marked off that, again, is right around $740, $750. I still think that's probably where we're headed. By the way, that's still another almost $100 down on NVIDIA. Where the heck would the S&P and the NASDAQ be? if that happens. Now, one thing I just want to point out, yesterday morning, NVIDIA was gapping higher, as was SMCI. In fact, SMCI went up huge early in the day on kind of a short squeeze, even though yesterday I talked about what ASML said, right? ASML is a Dutch chip uh, parts maker, and they basically came out and said, hey, listen, our bookings are down considerably. This is not because of China. And as soon as I heard not because of China, I said, holy cow, this means that maybe there's a slowdown in the chip in the AI sector, right? Now, again, there may not be, but that's the first thing I jumped to that conclusion. People at that point, before the game plan, hadn't jumped to that conclusion because we were seeing NVIDIA up and SMCI and the other semiconductors up. All of a sudden, though, throughout the course of the morning, and I want to show you this, guys. If we go to the SMCI chart here and we flip over to this one, I want to show you the intraday. So if we go to the intraday, and I'm just going to here go to the non-aftermarket action, this is what we saw here, right? So here was your open yesterday, right, all the way. In fact, this was, excuse me, this is where we closed the previous day to yesterday. This is where you, you opened, you ran up here, which was all the way to like $1,020, $1,020, and then you proceeded to fall within about an hour all the way to $950. That's a, that's a $70 drop in basically a, a, an hour on SMCI. A lot of the semis did this, and then a lot of them kind of went like this the rest of the day. But again, it was the key was in this game plan, I talked about that ASML news and the extrapolation of understanding what it means. And this is the key is these game plans, guys, they will give you insights that you're not going to get necessarily in mainstream media. And that is very important, folks. My goal, again, is to unveil the truth is being for investors here for the public so that you guys have the information that institutions have or maybe don't even have yet. All right, so that was a chart I wanted to show you. Let's flip over to Taiwan Semiconductor. Here's Taiwan Semiconductor down right around the lows of the day, closed yesterday around uh, 139, trading at 135. A $4 drop's not huge, but it's coming on the back of downside from yesterday and recent downside overall. The one thing I want to show you is, look at this. I love how you can kind of semi-predict these moves on earnings. Now, earnings are very risky. There's no doubt about it. But if we looked at Taiwan Semi going into earnings, what did we have? We had level, 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 level 
here and it broke down. We retraced to the scene of the crime going into earnings, but we did not recapture the line. And now Taiwan Semi is down on earnings. Another great example of this too would be Alcoa earnings. Let's go to the Alcoa chart. So Alcoa is up a little bit on earnings. If we look at this chart, the first thing if I zoom out on this chart on Alcoa is that in the scheme of this, Alcoa is towards the lower end of the chart. So right away, when something's towards the lower end, I'm not looking to short it going into earnings. Generally, I don't trade that way anyways, where I do something just before earnings because there's way too much risk. But the idea is if you're kind of guessing what earnings are going to do, you don't want to be thinking downside necessarily unless you have a really bearish signal. So it was off of its highs. Then if we zoom in, look at this, okay? If we zoom in on this chart, what do we have? What kind of pattern formation is this on Alcoa? You guys tell me. What type of pattern formation is that? Bull flag, right? Not only that, but if we look at this pivot, this pivot is right here, which is giving you added support right there. So you essentially had bullish consolidation above support right here, and it favors the upside. What is Alcoa doing on earnings? It's up a little bit today. Not a lot, but it is up just a little bit. And again, it just allows you to have a little bit more probability in understanding the directional move on these earnings announcements. All right, other than that, guys, I did mention Las Vegas Sands. Las Vegas Sands here, let's take a look. That stock is down on earnings, so again, down on earnings. Let's see if, was there any indication on the chart that we could be falling? And I would say, yes, there was. Just looking at the chart, guys, what kind of pattern is this? Look at that. What's, what type of pattern is that? Bear flag, right? So again, down on earnings, makes sense. You were in a kind of an uptrend, kind of hammering on support multiple times over here. Looks like you just broke as we were getting into earnings. The stock is down on earnings. Not a ton, but again, just another example of earnings kind of dictating price action there. All right, lastly, Tesla, guys. Tesla, again, continues to be something that I'm, I'm liking more and more. I'm going to show you just one or two things here on the chart. So there's a gap fill coming up at 144.50. That's a very interesting level. There's also a pivot low here on the chart, which is right around 153. We're right a little bit below that, but we also have this downsloping trend line. So there's a lot of support between, I would say, 152 and 144. The last thing I'll just throw on my chart is the divergences. I love looking at the RSI, and this RSI is really interesting. And I'll show you why. Ignore the yellow line down here. That's just your average. But if you look here, you had a low, lower low, lower low, right? And if you look at the RSI, low, higher low, and higher low. So you're making a positive divergence. So while you're seeing these downgrades and all this negative news on Tesla, at least accumulation-wise, this tells me that institutions are starting to load up for a bounce. Does it mean it's not going to go to 144? No, I mean, it could go there depending on what the stock market does, but there's certainly a positive divergence here on the RSI that gets me interested. All right, guys, let's do our next spin of the wheel real quick here. Let's jump over here and see what the new prize or the prize is going to be for Friday. Let's do it and see where we land. Oh, it's a verified investing lucky draw, guys. So this, folks, this is when it lands on these, it's dealer's choice. And what that means is it's my choice of what we're going to give away. So let me think here. Let's see what we can do. You know what? I'm going to announce it later in a separate video that I'll post on YouTube, all right? So we'll do that later. I got to think about this. I'm going to make it good. I promise you it's going to be awesome. So dealer's choice when it lands on the Verified Investing logo, and I promise you the value will be at least $500 in value. All right, so at the end, I'll let you know the question that you have to respond to, and then we'll do, I'll do a quick little short video I'll post up. You guys can see exactly what it's going to be. All right, over here we go, guys. Let's go into the chart of Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin, guys, did confirm, okay? So the most important thing that we've been following is this trend line, would it confirm? Now, this was amazing because yesterday when we got the daily closing of the candle, it confirmed by like 50 bucks. I mean, it was so close. But yes, it has confirmed. Now, let's break down what that means. So what does it mean? It means that now this line, this line that we have confirmed below, becomes major resistance, right? It also now insinuates that we likely, even though we could retrace even back to the scene of the crime like this, it likely means we'll head lower. Now, there is a new trend line I'm watching. So again, as a trader, you always have to be open to looking at your new levels, right? You remember... 
A good investor or trader doesn't tell the charts or tell the price action what it should do. We don't make things up in our heads just to make our narrative sound good. We don't look at social media and say, oh man, everyone's telling me this is gonna go to the moon, so I'm gonna believe that. It, it, that's irrelevant. It's all in these charts. That's the closest you're gonna get to having the success that you want. What I wanna show you now is if we flip here and we do a new trend line, Look at this, I'm gonna take this high, and you can follow it right here, right? So we're gonna take these highs, we're gonna connect it through this high, this secondary high, through this high. We're, so we're gonna connect through three highs, and look at what you get. You literally get yesterday's low to the penny. So, here we have a new trend line to watch of support that we have to respect in the near term. And again, I'll explain everything about this. So we're taking this place to here, to here, right? and then it goes right to that low right there. Now, essentially what this means is that you may be due for a bounce on Bitcoin. We're getting a little bounce today, but just understand you now have a major support here and a major resistance right up here. So again, what I just showed you before is there is a chance that we could trade up into that level and then reverse and then maybe bounce like that. Eventually, I still think we break lower to basically 52 to 49,000. All right, so again, just be aware, you're, you did hit a new support line yesterday. Has to be respected. Doesn't matter if you think it's going to break or not. It hasn't broken yet, and we have to respect that. Is it possible for us to trade back above this level? Anything is possible, of course. If it does, if it gets above this level, it must confirm to reestablish its bullishness. And I will walk you through that day in, day out in this game plan here at Verified Investing. Okay, so on we go. Let's look at a couple others here. Cardano, uh, I am not ready to go long Cardano, but I certainly do have a level that I'm watching. So I have a major pivot right in here to here, and then right across from these, this little shelf right here through here, right through here. They converge around 35 cents. If we get down to 35 cents, I'm probably a swing trade buyer of Cardano. All right, next up, let's jump over to gold. I want to talk about gold real quick. Gold is bouncing up today, and again, a little bit of a bounce higher. Just remember, you still have the domination of the topping tail. So regardless of how bullish I am on gold, right, longer term, and I still think it's going to 2,500, maybe next year 3,000, ultimately the topping tail right here that touched here and reversed, that's in charge until it's proven otherwise. And again, I make the charts tell me. I don't tell the charts. That's just the topping tails are topping tails. For 100 years, topping tails in technical analysis have been signals of a reversal, especially when they occur on heavy volume. Who am I to tell it any different? All right, that's what it is, right? So yes, we're up today on gold, but we're not seeing anything major. Now, I haven't talked about uh, platinum in a while. Platinum's actually getting interesting for me, right? So if we look at the chart on platinum, we basically have this kind of bottom and then the move up. We did have a double top here. Right, so you did hit resistance, but we're look at the retrace where it's come into. So if we draw a trend line right in here, you're very close to technical support. If you're like me and you like the metals longer term, this is starting to get interesting for a potential swing trade on the long side of platinum. All right, another one to look at real quick. We'll take a look at sugar. Sugar's been getting crushed. It is getting a bounce, but look at the drawdown on sugar here, guys. This is an amazing drop on sugar. It's really rolled over significantly. It is right into this little double bottom. I'm not interested in this yet, though. I don't know what's going on here on the charts, but I certainly am not interested on this. One chart that is into support, take a look at cotton here. Cotton has had an, an incredible decline. Look at this decline on the charts. And the one line that I think could be insinuating a little bit of a bounce here is if we take the low from 2022, and we connect it right through here, look at that. We're getting very close to this $8,000 level, and that might be a good level on uh, cotton. All right, so I'm going to try to mix in a few, different, um, a few different commodities. A lot of these I cover in my commodity service, Smart Money Commodities and Miners at Verified Investing. If you're really into commodity trading, that's where you want to be. All right, next up, oil. Guys, did I nail this or what? I mean, again, and, and it's not me. I want to be clear. It's not me. It's the charts. The charts. I just, I just tell you guys what the charts are telling me, right? What did I say? I kept on saying, guys, look for a pullback to $82 a barrel. Where are we? 82.27. We went as low as 81, right in the zone that I had marked off for the last week of where I said it was going to pull back. All right, so again, now this is technical major support. Let's see if oil moves up. If it breaks, watch out below. But right now, that was a great call right there that you guys, again, witnessed me game, gaming that out. 
and where it should go, and it went right there. I didn't think it was going to go there in one single day yesterday, but that's what happens with the charts. The charts are always in charge. They'll do what they want. Lastly, natural gas, which I remain positive on here, guys. Let me bring that up on nat gas. Nat gas is upticking just a little bit, but still stuck in that same zone here. So again, if we look at that starting to uptick, remember, the key level you have to break is this 205 level on nat gas. Okay, so this is continuing to be its double top. If we can get to 205 and break through, 225 is your next big resistance level. Okay, guys, amazing stuff. Going back to center screen here, what we can do here, if I can grab that ball there. Oh, yeah. So the question today, guys, is if you had to pick one or the other, what would you do? Would you be a banker on Wall Street? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, by the way, I'm just coming up with these out of thin air. Or would you be a crypto analyst for the next 10 years? Like, which one do you think is going to be top notch? Which one? And I, listen, I can guess a lot of your answers. But again, I'm just throwing these out there. Feel free to write something positive. All I want is you guys commenting something great. But overall, I try to give you a little insight into what to say uh, or what to, what to comment on. So you can write that or just write something positive about today's, today's broadcast. That's fine as well. All right, guys, I got to get to the trading room. Thank you, as always, for being here, for following, for supporting us here. And I'll keep giving away the appreciation stuff that we have. Take care.